Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Friar Focus. I'm Father Frank Savola, and we're coming to you from St. Anthony's Shrine in downtown Boston. Welcome back. Today, our guest, we're taking a little break from all the brown today. Um, and today we have with us Marianne Rooney Hegan, who is our chief philanthropy, oh my gosh, our chief philanthropy officer here at St. Anthony Shrine. Marianne, welcome. Well, thank you. It's, I'm delighted to be here. It's nice to have you with thank us. You. Um, Marianne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where are you from? Uh, what, what have you been doing oh. these uh, 20 years of your professional life? These 20 years of my professional <laughs> life, if only it were 20 years. Um, born and brought up in the city of Lynn and uh, parochial school girl all the way, St. Mary's High School in Lynn. Mm -hmm. Very proud of that. Uh, started out as a classroom teacher fourth grade. That's all I ever wanted to do was teach mm -hmm. the fourth grade. Um, I went to school and I got my degree in social work and sociology and a minor in education. Oh. I didn't use the social work but went right into the classroom and um, teaching jobs in Lynn started to dwindle and so I had to find another job and I ended up at um, assistant director at the Chamber of Commerce in Lynn was there for five years. Then I went to the visiting nurses of Lynn and I was their first development director. And it started out there. Mm -hmm. And then um, my mother died and she went home to God, which was a real transition in our family. And I thought, okay, I was looking at a job in Atlanta. And lo and behold, the pastor at St. Mary's said, why don't you come to work here? And Actually, he asked me this after Mass one day, and an hour's conversation, I just couldn't get away from him. So long and the short of it is I ended up being there for 10 years. For the parish or for the school or for both? For the school. For the school. For the high school. And uh, we did our first capital campaign there at St. Mary's. We built the William F. Canal Center. Yes. And um, we built up the um, alumni body for giving. We had 50% of the alumni giving, it was, which was incredible. That's amazing, yeah. And then I transformed over to Emanuel College, and here I am. Wow, that's that's. I knew you were. Uh, I knew you had done some teaching. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that to me just yes. casually in the past, yes. uh, but I didn't realize you had the social work uh, degree and sure. a little bit of background with that. I re I remember, uh, I, you know, we do our, our student teaching in the fall. Well, the summer of my between my junior and senior year, I did um, my casework for social work. And I was counseling first and second court offenders, adolescent girls in the uh -huh. city of Lynn. Well, let me tell you, those girls were smarter than I was. Um, some of these girls were runaways, and that was just, I just couldn't get my head around that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was still playing Barbie dolls at 13, and they're living on the street. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been exposed to a lot, and I've certainly learned an awful lot. Yeah, I'm sure you yeah. have. Which I bring all here. Now, as, you, as you've mentioned to me many times, um, you grew up with four brothers. I did. So that uh, that, that helps, right? With your street smarts. Oh, and, uh, it did. It did. Um, <laughs> How to make your way through a, through, through a backyard uh, backyard disagreement. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, let me tell you, I learned from observing. Um, I certainly wasn't allowed to be on the street learning. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it was a, a very protective upbringing. Uh, let's let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. But um, four brothers and four of my best friends. Yeah, that's great. You know, that's great. And, uh, yeah, you talk about your brothers all yeah, the time. Yeah, we're, we're we're all joined at the hip. Yeah, good, bad, or indifferent. We yeah, are. that's great. Yeah, that's great. So now you've been here at St. Anthony Shrine for how many years? It will be eight years in September. Okay, terrific. Eight years. And uh, so many people ask me how I got here, and I have to be honest. I've I've said this to Father Tom on a number of occasions. I saw the position posted, and I have to tell you, I did not know what St. Anthony Shrine was. Never heard of it. Wow, okay. I only knew it as Arch Street. I didn't know it had <laughs> another name. There you go, folks. I just didn't know it had <laughs> another name. And as Regina Quinlan tells me, that's of a certain generation, Marion. Well, that's all my father ever referred to it as Arch Street. Yeah. You know, I'm going to Mass at Arch Street. And anytime, like everybody else that's been on here or that we meet, Everybody has an Arch Street story. That's right. I'd come into Boston with my aunts shopping and you always came in here. You made a visit, you, you lit the candles, and then 
you did your shopping. You know, among the friars, and not, not just the friars here uh, at St. Anthony's, but uh, among the friars, this is simply known as our street. Yeah. Um, we do that with all of our ministries. We kind of tag all of our ministries by where they are. Mm-hmm. And um, this place has always been known as Arch Street. Today, and, and just, to, just to illustrate this even more, today I was at a funeral at St. Ignatius at, 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 in Chestnut Hill mm-hmm. on the campus of Boston College, the great Father Michael Himes. And uh, there was a number of Jesuits there and, and other priests as well. And Father Tom and I were there and Father Jeff Jordan and Father Damien Park and uh, another friar from Connecticut, Father Bill Bowden. And um, whenever one of the other priests uh, asked me where I was from, I always said, say, oh, I'm from St. Anthony's Shrine. And they immediately said, oh, you mean Arch Street. So <laughs> right, right, right. People, people don't, uh, don't always get it when, when you say St. Right, Anthony's Shrine. Right. And, it, and it's funny. You ask people today, and many of them either say Arch Street to me or the Shrine. Yeah, the Shrine. The Shrine. Yeah, but we have a good long history, 75 years this year. Um, so uh, now, tell tell us about just what you what your work is here. You you have you do a lot of great things here. So oh, what you kind? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I was hired as director of development eight years ago, and I came in right after I think Father Tom did a, a year after he was here, a year and a half or so, um, and we had some elements, some components of a development program. Um, but since that time, we've started to build other pieces mm-hmm. and brought on more professionals in, in that realm. But I think what we've come now that I'm most proud of, I think, is that um, we've raised the profile of the shrine in the community. Absolutely. And, I, and when I say we, I don't mean just our department. I mean we, the city. We, we've been very fortunate to enlist the help of a number of business leaders um, in, in, in all professions, the legal profession, the medical profession, finance, the attorneys, architects, as we know. And they've come together and to help us do such that. And I think Father, we've got Father Tom out meeting as many people as we can, um, involved in chamber programs, involved in other nonprofits, um, so I think that's been really good for us. And, and I don't have to tell you, anytime a friar walks in the room in their habit, that is such a magnet and people just flock to you. I mean, they just do. And um, and we always, and somebody always, again, has a story. Father, let me tell you about yeah. Arch Street. Let me tell you about this. Yeah. And, and people want to be engaged. And I think that's been one of our greatest successes in the past eight years is that we've We've helped raise our profile to create to create greater community awareness, and to um, to also showcase our key leadership volunteers. Mm-hmm. You know, look who's helping us. Exactly, some some great people in the city of Boston, right? Or the area too, much, right? Outside the city, right. Well. And it's yeah. not always wealthy people no, that are helping right. us. You're right. You know, it's all walks of life and, and and all stations in life. I don't know if they still use that word anymore, but. Um, but everybody wants to help, and there's a job for everybody. There's a peace for everybody. We always like to say millionaires are sitting next to to, uh, to the homeless at Santa Anthony right. Shrine. And right, that's always true. Now I got to tell you a little something. Father Tom and I were talking earlier today about uh, today's Friar Focus, and I reminded him that you were going to be on. And he said to her, he said to tell to make sure that you didn't say his name very often. So. Okay. You've reached your limit. Okay. No, just, just oh, I got you. <laughs> no, I, just, you know, Father Tom's a very modest guy. He, he, yes, he does he is. a ma- magnificent job here, um, but he's a very modest guy. So uh, Yes, he is. <laughs> he yes, it. he is. Now, let's, let's talk about um, what I think is the jewel of our development, um, and that's our gala. Yes. Uh, we, we have a gala every year. Um, where we, uh, we, we faked St. Anthony's Shrine and um, all, all the good works that we do. And we, we raise a significant amount of money at, mm-hmm. that, uh, at that event. I came to St. Anthony's Shrine five years ago. I came in gala season, I mm-hmm. guess, is when I, when I arrived. And I remember our goal was half a million dollars. And today our goal is $2 million. So we've really, we've really grown. Give us a little history of the, uh, of the gala and how, how it came to be what it is. Well, eight years ago, we were struggling financially. Yeah. 
And um, so an awful lot of people came together to help with that. And through leadership of an awful lot of people, and um, we wanted to create something, again, to create greater community awareness, to help fill that financial gap, and um, to, to plant the seeds and, and create a culture of philanthropy around Art Street. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean? We want people to, I don't, I don't ask for money, I ask people to invest in our mission. You know, look, look what your gift will do. And I always say gift. I, I was very, um, I've had an awful lot of talented mentors in my life, one of whom I, I keep in touch with. He was a former Jesuit. And um, he used to say to me, Marianne, we're in the love affair business. The more somebody likes you, the nicer the gift. Mm -hmm. The more they love you, the bigger the gift. So this dinner has allowed us to bring an awful lot of people together. And... This year we're, nominate, we're honoring um, Anthony Consigli with the Pope Francis Award. And the Pope Francis Award was, was created um, like Pope Francis, who took the name of your founder, mm -hmm. St. Francis of Assisi, someone whose life mirrors the mission and charism of St. Francis, lover of the poor and those who are marginalized. Mm -hmm. And every year... You know, God's been good to us. We've found the right person. Yeah, we've found great honorees. You know, wonderful honorees. We, we started out with Dr. Jim um, O'Connell from Boston Healthcare for the mm -hmm. Homeless. Then we went to Tom O'Brien, HYM Investment. That was my first gala. Yes, yes. And then we went to um, the Honorable Regina Quinlan Doherty, first woman. Mm -hmm. And then we did Regina Pisa, uh, Chairman Emeritus at Goodwin. And then last year we had um, David Manfredi from Elvis yeah. Manfredi, who did designed our beautiful women's clinic. Mm -hmm. And um, this year it's Anthony Consigli, and Anthony's wonderful. Um, Anthony is from the Milford area, and he has just, you know, jumped right in with us on this. And um, this year's dinner is November sixteenth, and the theme is legacy. This year, we're a legacy seventy five years on our street. And Anthony is a legacy in his company. He's fourth generation of running yeah, that company. It's really amazing. And it's owned by the employees. Yeah. So everything about Anthony just clicks with us. He's a very lo another modest guy who does great who does yep. great work. Yep. Yeah. And he's his brother is co-chairing. Mm -hmm. His brother Matthew, mm -hmm. along with David Manfredi, last year's honoree. And um, I got to tell you, Matthew has really stepped up, and he's. He sent in a, a prospect list of probably 75 people, and of that 75, I would say, honestly, only about a handful we already had. Mm -hmm. So it's always bringing new people, and this is an op this dinner is an opportunity to tell our story and share our mission with a wider audience. Yeah, it's a, it's a terrific event. It is. Um, loads of work goes into it. You know, the, the gala is November 16th. On November 17th, we start working on next year's gala, yes, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> and, we the, in the, and, and I always say that the real work with this dinner starts the next day to make sure that we cultivate all the new people mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and keep them on board. That's, that's, that takes a lot of work. And, you know, um, I've been to a lot of galas and, and fundraising events, and they can be sleepers, you mm -hmm. know, and... Um, we have managed to make ours a really good time. It's really very enjoyable. Um, and it doesn't go on forever. There's not a million speeches. Uh, oh, no. We get right to the point. Um, we, we do what we have to do. And people really enjoy themselves. It is. We have a start time and a stop time. Mm -hmm. And we better get everything. And it's, it's very well choreographed. Um, one of the things that we do at our dinner, as you know, is we have a live auction of just a few items, yeah. just a few items. And the ones that seem to be really creating their own brand and taking off are the dinners that Regina Pisa does at her home. Yes, very nice. Um, and people bid $14,000. I said, do we have to up that this year? Yeah. Um, she does three or four dinners at $14,000. Yeah, yeah. And they're... And she does all the work for it. I know she does. Um, so it's it's really different. Yeah. It's different, you know, and it brings an awful lot of new people together, yeah. and it's great. 
It's a lot of fun. It is a, a lot, lot of fun. fun. And to be, you know, like Marianne said, we have a start time, we have an end time, we know exactly what we're doing. Um, you know, I get a script, Father Tom gets a script. Um, and, you know, I got to tell you, folks, for Franciscans, that is not an easy feat. <laughs> to uh, to keep to make us so disciplined inside the couple of hours that we're there, but it works. It works between Marianne and and uh, the person who uh, is is in our uh, the, the company that we work with. Yep. Um, we get it done. It's a it's a great we event. Do. We do, yeah. and 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 they work very hard to to accomplish that. But there's a lot of planning that goes, as you can well imagine, uh, making sure we get the right people in the room, making sure. Everything's done. The, the decor is right, and, and they take time to do food um, tastings to make sure everybody likes what we're having, mm -hmm. and, you know, and if somebody wants fish, and there are those who want a kosher meal and those who want a, a vegan meal or a, a vegetarian, we, we accommodate everybody. At least we try to accommodate everyone. About, about, gosh, 20 years ago, I was living in Hartford, and... Um, uh, it was more than 20 years ago. It was 25 years ago. I was living in Hartford. And um, we friars decided that we were going to put up a new building. And um, it was going to be our, our Franciscan Center for Urban Ministry. Mm -hmm. And we needed to raise, um, I think, around $3 million to, to build this building that many years ago. And so we started a, a pretty aggressive uh, d development campaign, but we did it ourselves. Sure. The pastor uh, had some experience in development. I had done a little, I had dabbled in development a little bit. And so we just, you know, we figured out who we were going to ask for money. And one of the things that we, that we used to do is we would invite a prospect over to the friary mm -hmm. for dinner. Mm -hmm. And we would have the same dinner all the time. The, the pastor was a magnificent cook. And he always did this beautiful veal chop mm. um, and some pasta and, and stuff like that. And that became sort of the signature dish. And the staff used to laugh that, you know, oh, Father Jerome's making veal chops. There must be somebody coming over that he's going to ask for money. <laughs> well, then one day um, he had some, we had some, he had some extra veal chops in the freezer. And I distinctly remember him saying to me in the, one morning, he goes, you know, I think I'm going to cook these veal chops tonight. And I said, oh, who's coming? He said, no, nobody's coming over. He said, but we, I've got them and I just want to. I think I'm, I'll, I'll make them tonight. And as uh, the day went on, one of the guys who, who he and his wife worked in the parish, Hank was a great, a great help in the parish, and he was wandering through the friary, and Jerome said to him, hey, why don't you and Franny come for dinner tonight? He goes, yeah, okay, what are we having? He goes, I'm going to make some veal chops. And he said, absolutely not. I am not coming over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knew. No, 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 no. But I'm not going to ask you for any money. <laughs> but there is a Franciscan way, you know. Sure. We, uh, we we get to folks and 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 we do that here. We invite people in and we All have the time. lunch and right. you know see the see the friary, see the whole shrine, right, right. Know, see and what we're all about. Exactly, because it's all about building relationships. Yeah. That's that's what it is. It's not asking for money. No, it's really it's right. building a relationship. And again, it's a courtship. You know, you got to have a date first before you get married, mm -hmm. you know, and, it, and there's a, an awful lot of time that goes in between. So, you know, we're very fortunate because members of our, our, our dinner committee understand this and they're saying, I think we ought to uh, approach so-and-so. Okay. Um, can you help us get to so-and-so? Yeah. I can do that for you. Let me, let me see. Yeah. I said, all we want to do is, an, or oftentimes... I will email or call someone. Could you just make the introduction? I know you have a connection with them. I don't want to, we're not going to ask for any money. We just want to meet them. Yeah. We, we'd like them to come in and learn more about us, what our mission's about. Well, you know, I'm, I'm in these gala meetings, development meetings, along with a whole bunch of other people every month or, or so when we get together. And um, one of the things that made a lot, a lot of amazing stuff goes on in that little hour that we're together on Wednesday mornings. But one of the things that amazes me is that people step up, just like you're saying. Say, Does anyone know John Doe? Oh, I know him. Yeah, I worked with him ten years ago at, at this place and that place. And like, yeah, yeah, I'll call. Him. And they make the call, and the next thing you know, we have a we have a, we have a, a, a new donor. Right. It, it, it amazes me when I hear that. And 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 then somebody says, Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember when he worked there. You know what? I yeah, I'll call him too. Exactly. Yeah. You're tag team. Mm -hmm. you should, oh, for sure. Somebody made a comment or, or wants to get to someone of some influence in the city. And um, 
And and this man was listening on his phone. And by the way, he's brand new to us, mm -hmm. brand new committee member. I haven't even met him yet. Um, but he said to Father Tom, um, I, I know, I know someone that knows him well. We serve on a board together. May I may I take that for you? Yeah. And yeah, of course. Sure, sure. It, it, that's how it. That's how it does. It's and all it, about the relationship. It is, and it's and it's funny. Uh, Caitlin, who's on our our coordinator that helps us with oh, this yes. dinner, she said to me, Marianne, I work with an awful lot of committees. We don't have committees that are so involved the way yours is. You know? Yeah. We're very fortunate. Well, you know, we have a great brand, and we're well-known in the city of Boston. But the other thing that we have, I mean, we're not your typical nonprofit. Right. I mean, first and foremost, we're a, a, a church mm -hmm. and a place where people come for the sacraments um, and people come to us for confessions and mass and, and just to sort of, you know, be who they are, whether they're billionaires or not, mm -hmm. you know, and I, that really is very important. And, and that's, I think, what, what helps us. It, it, it helps us get people to help us right. because this is a very special and important place. It is. Lots of people in the city of Boston do really great things. Um, but, you know, our, our uh, ability to be with somebody during difficult times and joyful times and, and, and feed their spirituality and, 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 and help them, you know, with their sacramental hearts that makes all the difference in the world. Sure it does. Sure it does. Regina Quinlan said it to me very succinctly. And she said, Marianne, Arch Street works at building community. She said, they work at it. And and I've thought about that on a number of occasions. And she's right. It, it's about a community. Yeah. And I think that's why people, and people feel accepted here. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I could be sitting next to some CEO, and on the other side of me could be some poor soul that slept, slept in the doorway. Yeah. And nobody goes like this at church, like, I'm going to push over. No, mm -hmm. we're, we're all together. You know, I mentioned this morning that I was at a funeral for Father Michael Himes, a great theologian uh, from Boston College, a brother of one of our friars in Holy Name Province. And um, I've listened to his lectures over and over again because he's just so insightful and uh, whatnot. And, you know, Marianne, what you said reminds me of something he said all the time. Without community, you can't know God. And that's really profound. And, and you're right. We work at that. You know, we, 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 in, our, in our preaching and in our welcoming and, and everything we do, because yes. it's the only way to know God. Right. It is in our community. You know, when I first started working here, and I'll be very transparent, Sometimes it's tough walking down the street and seeing the homeless people. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of a scared, as I say to you, a little <laughs> bit afraid. And But then you get to know them and they get to know you sure. and, and all that. And I mean this sincerely. When you come to Arch Street, this is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be welcoming and accepting and loving. And is is someone said to me, um, it was one of my doctors actually, and she said to me, Miriam, you live out the gospel there. And I looked at her and I said, Yeah, you're right. That's right. We do. That that that's what it's about. You know, it's not this you have to be perfect and you have to do this and stand here and, and kneel then. Sure, there's a there's a, a ritual mm -hmm. type thing. But Come on, we're all in this together. And I think that's what's so special about 100 Arch Street. There you go. Um, that really sums it up. I mean, all of us here, that's that's the number, the first thing on everybody's job description here is to preach the gospel. Um, whether you're doing that as a friar or as a staff person or as a leader or as, as a follower, whatever the case may be, the number one thing we do here is preach the gospel. Um, and Marianne, you do a good job at that. You do a really <laughs> you. good job at that. Wow. You're also, you're, she's, Marianne's also the person that will tell you first off that she's going to pray for you. Right? I mean, when I mention something, she says to me, I'm storming heaven with memorares, which I love that. I love the memorares. Oh, I love so do I. Oh. 
I don't do anything without <laughs> the Blessed Mother. I always yeah. go to the person in charge. That's right. It's, mother is always mother in charge. Mother or sister. Right. <laughs> mother is always in charge. Yeah. Right, right, right. Great. My namesake. One of them. Mm-hmm. One of them. Well, that's great, Marianne. Thanks. Thank you. We uh, we always end uh, our sessions with a prayer. Okay. Um, so today, I think we'll pray for all of our donors, our benefactors. Yes. Um, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for all of your good gifts. We thank you for our benefactors. We ask that you continue to bless them, continue uh, to help us show our gratitude for them. We thank you for their generosity. We thank you for giving them a Franciscan heart. We extend our blessing and our thanks to our benefactors. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Great. thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel called Shrine Boston. And that becomes the way that you spread the gospel. The number one uh, point in everybody's job description, not just the St. Anthony Shrine. The number one point in everybody's job description is to spread the good news. And you can help us do that. You can do it yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel. The more you subscribe, the more people will, will be able to reach. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Thank you.